Paul Mosfidal from Cynic, and you're watching EMG TV, and this is Five Minutes with Paul. My favorite riff to play live is, uh, I'm gonna relate it to what's going on right now, which is it's currently the 30th anniversary of Cynic's first album, Focus. So we're playing the entire record front to back at the start of the show. And the last song on, on Focus is a song called How Could I? And for me, it kind of marks the signature sound of kind of a lot of those Cynic riffs, especially from that first record, which is the double picking stuff. And I just always love playing this riff. It just has a kind of stability to it and kind of steadiness and, and kind of a certain pocket that's very specific to the, to the beginning of the song. So I'll just play it and give you an example of what the vibe is. A riff every guitar player should know uh, could be so subjective for someone like me because I, I grew up with a lot of different influences, but I also, early on, was I had an older brother who was into classic rock, so I grew up in a household listening to Zeppelin, Floyd, Sabbath, Van Halen, Iron Maiden, all that stuff, and uh, it was kind of, so that was really what made me pick up the guitar. So. You know, you can start as if I go back to really the beginnings of like a Zeppelin. Or, uh, you know. Um, but probably like where it really started to get into like chops and more kind of technical type of playing was with Maiden. Uh, Iron Maiden, I think the number of the beast. Uh, I don't know, I, I messed that up, but that's the vibe, you know. I haven't played that riff in a long time. My favorite guitar shape is, uh, is this guitar which is the Bowden shape from Strandberg. It's kind of a hybrid post-strat vibe, kind of with the new angles and different curves. And what I like, it does kind of a mini Explorer thing, which is probably my early favorite shape that led to this, you know, Explorer. And then I remember that Washburn, that uh, Carlos Cavazio model was really badass. And then kind of going to the Strandberg Varberg model, which kind of had this hybrid thing going on, and then leading to this, which is just really ergonomic and offset and cool and just feels amazing. So this is this is kind of the vibe for sure. So my most memorable recording studio moment comes up because I've been going through a lot of this footage. Uh, when we made our first album, Focus, in 93, we cut everything, we recorded, uh, we had video footage of the whole process. And we went through a lot of upheaval during the recording process. We basically switched bass players <laughs> right in the middle of bass tracking. We realized that the vocoder was having issues. There was a lot of problems that came up. and. We started so amped and then we went reached this middle point in the tracking process where we just kind of felt like to totally deflated and lost. And I remember even our engineer who was co-producing, Scott Burns, saying, I don't know if I can send any of this to your A&R guy, Monty. He's not going to get it. You, all the vocals are, have lost their way. This vocoder stuff's kind of screwed. You don't have bass. We had basically had a new bass player we brought in but he hadn't cut his stuff yet. And we were just kind of in this unknown land of feeling like we didn't have a record. And we were really scared, actually. We felt like everything was about to kind of just go to hell. So we ended up 
basically taking a break. We left the studio and our bass player that we brought in, Sean Malone, worked on his bass parts and I came back with kind of a more realized stuff in the vocal department and kind of fin finessing things because we were experimenting with this vocoder that had a lot of things that weren't clear to us. And we found it, we found the record and it really it was that space of letting things to kind of simmer and getting some distance around it. But it was definitely one of those moments that points to like kind of keeping your head you know, keeps to keep going when everything seems like it's about to fall apart, and uh, and how we ended up with a record that was really cool. But it took kind of going through that to to realize what we had. So if I'm if I'm in the studio and all my pedals are taken away or vanish, and I only get to keep one. I think the one I would hold on to is the Mercury 7 by Maris. Uh, it's, a, it's a reverb pedal. It's got just this, it's actually inspired by the soundtrack for Blade Runner from 1982. So it just has this like kind of ambient futuristic thing going on with the way the, the, the reflections and the ambience of the reverbs are just so rad. So that pedal is definitely a keeper. I've heard bands cover cynic songs. They're not easy to do. Cynic songs tend to be layered and complex and a lot of crazy riffs and stuff. So it was always interesting to me to hear bands do it. And there was a bunch of French bands actually that did a compilation of our first album. And one band that really struck me as doing something cool with a song called Textures, an instrumental from our first record was Gorod. I think they're a French band as well, and they just did this amazing rendition of textures that was really impressive. Also, another French band called Collegia did a cover of How Could I uh, on Focus's album that was impressive because they got Angela from the original singer of Arch Enemy to growl, and she just crushed it. Uh, also, Obscura did How Could I. So I've heard different versions of tunes covered. They're not easy to do. I think it's really cool when a band takes a cynic song and makes it their own because it's kind of, it makes it more interesting to listen to than to try and cop the exact sound of the band. <laughs> 